We are being lied to about our history and who we are. So naturally, one must question the interest in us realizing that lie. A lie so big that it would change every fabric of society. Most religions would crumble and anarchy would tear us apart if the truth got out too quickly. The following information must be taken into stride and not met with anger, but understanding. There exists a vastly sophisticated control system that has been created to keep people unaware and in a state of order. This system encompasses nearly every part of our life and is the foundation for what creates the illusion of us. The complexity found within the system that governs our suppression is almost impossible to consider unless you can comprehend all the pieces involved. It controls every part of both science and religion, which forms the foundations for the public's reality. Once you begin to objectively understand each aspect of this control system, you will truly be free from it. The thick barriers that protect such loyal nationalism among so much of society will come crumbling down once they begin to embrace this truth. The most powerful aspect of the control system is governed through the mainstream religions of the world. Since religion formed the oldest foundations of truth in our distant past, it became the most insidious of all of these control systems, for its very purpose was to assist in our own awareness and growth of spirituality. As far back as the Roman Empire, the Christian Church's use of war and killing in the name of their God has been a disastrous genocide on the human race. What was a message given to us from the great teachings of our ancient elders was rewritten and turned into a form of sacrificial idol worship by Marduk or Amun-Ra, and Enlil or Jehovah. This altered model for religion does not promote outside thinking and limits the viewpoint of the person to that of the church. This form of worship feeds off of humanity's deep need for seeking direction in this seemingly hostile existence. The path towards discovering truth in ourselves and understanding our place in the universe is only found by fusing the ancient core properties of religion and spirituality with modern quantum physics. Only through this collaboration can explanations be found for our greatest questions. By separating and controlling both religion and science, the illusion of us was able to firmly take hold of our reality. Generation upon generation, these values and misinformation were carried down to our children and became the base of reality. We must break this cycle once and for all and only provide information that enhances awareness. The spectacular discovery of the Nag Hammadi Library in Egypt gives us compelling evidence to show a completely different version of the Hermetic writings which later became the Bible and provides further proof behind the Archon control system of hijacked religion. The Gnostic people, including the Druids, provided a far more expansive view of the truth behind our history which was built off of many of the core values of the ancient past, such as sacred geometry, which are still revered today on the highest level by modern religion and Freemasonry. These ancient Gnostic writings speak of our deep connection with the stars and the important influences humans have had from the gods and those they called the archons. These lost writings contain entire chapters that have been removed from the Bible, such as the hypostasis of the archons, which has censored off our awareness of history. Why would all of this important information be suppressed and kept from us? The head of the Christian church, led by the mighty eagle and red cross, ordered their armies to systematically seek out and destroy all ancient pagan libraries of the past, which linked to this forgotten version of the Bible. The Gnostic writings represent the oldest pre-Christian text ever found and are the most significant evidence we have for how the great teachings of the Bible were meant to be written all along. The concepts found within the ancient roots of religion itself prove that it was meant to be a far different aspect of human growth and followed a spiritual respect for the earth. Religion was intended to be a celebration of love and our deep spiritual connections to all of life. These ancient teachings were about discovering our divine higher conscious self and understanding our unique connection to the interconnected network which flows through everything in the universe. Once they were able to pollute and control these religions, all of our growth through conscious expansion was severed from us. 
While a concerted effort was underway to standardize religions under a central platform of control, a few of the more ancient religions from India and the Himalayan regions adamantly refused this hostile takeover and instead chose to honor their traditional core spiritual beliefs. Some good examples of this lost, pure form of religion can still be found with the practice of Hinduism and Buddhism today. It is no coincidence, then, that these religions worship the snake considering how important and symbolic this reference was to the inky side of the family. Some of the most important writings we have leading back to the truth of who we really are and our deep spiritual side are known as the Nag Hammadi Library, which composes of the Nag Hammadi scriptures and the Gnostic Gospels. The word Nag or Naga translates to mean snake and shows the connection back to this important symbology of the gods. The promoted religions, which are still increasing in popularity, enslave their followers into a selectively chosen mindset that discourages individual ideas and creative thinking. The Christian and Catholic churches are the largest proprietors of this false ideology and cause insurmountable damage to the progression of the human species. What we are taught in school is saints and heroes are often really soldiers of the church cleansing a region from those who differ in mindset or that contain great resources. Examples of this can be found with Columbus, Cortez, and Pizarro, who pillaged and stole the resources from the native people of the Americas to bolster the Spanish Empire, who was controlled by the god of war, Ninurta, under the symbol of the Byzantine eagle. This common theme of conquering native cultures who worship the knowledge of the snake and dragon can be found all across the world and speaks to a hidden war being fought between the dualistic gods of ancient history, which continues to this day. The Christian and Catholic Church were transformed into a fierce form of control by Amun-Ra and Enlil and became a conduit for intense violence against any non-believers. This can be clearly seen with the popular religious and cultural celebration known as St. Patrick's Day, which is celebrated with large amounts of alcohol and green leprechauns, all of which is used as a distraction from the real truth of what is actually being celebrated. St. Patrick was ordered by the church to rid Ireland of all the snakes found there, which was a metaphor for pagans and druids, since no snakes have ever lived in Ireland as it is too cold to support them. St. Patrick, along with his army of the church, murdered and cleansed the remaining pagans and druids from Ireland. Ireland and Scotland have become one of the last strongholds of this ancient connection back to the old religion, whose members have built spectacular megalithic monuments such as Stonehenge, which aligned with the specific star constellations, along with the spring and fall equinoxes. The goal of the church was to destroy all evidence linking to the knowledge of the snake and dragon back to Enki and Thoth and to demonize its true meaning. That's why members of the old religion were called snakes by the church and can be traced as far back as Adam and Eve with the serpent. The truth of history is often hidden beneath layers of lies and deception. The new religions were centrally located under the autocratic arm of the Vatican State led by the Rothschild family who assumed total authority for controlling the millions of followers they indoctrinated. Under the influences of the powerfully symbolic Red Cross, the church formed elite death squads made up of its most loyal subjects whose function was to cleanse the population of all pagan followers and destroy any evidence linking the past. This satanic worship of the occult resulted in the deaths of millions of people throughout history. The agenda behind the control of religions was to enslave the population into a selected mindset where their spirituality could be poisoned and used for their own oppression. The ultimate purpose behind the domination of religions within humanity can be discovered by searching through the ancient records of the past to discover the true secrets behind their intentions. Besides the control of our psyche, the real motive all along has been for the reclaiming of the Holy Land by the ancient families. This sacred ground, worth sacrificing so many lives over, is located in the most war-ravaged area of the planet. This ancient cradle of humanity has been devastated by warfare and turned into a literal hell on earth. Following the deadly conflicts that revolve around what is now Iraq, 
Syria, Iran, and Israel, it can be clearly seen that the archaic crusade to take back the sacrificial Holy Land has never actually ended. The only thing that has changed over time are the faulty reasons given for military occupation and the continued suffering inflicted on its people for so long. In the end, all of this makes complete sense if you consider where the scapegoats for hate and orchestrated terrorism have originated from. If society is made to believe that they hate another ethnic group, they will continue to support war there, even at the cost of thousands of innocent people's lives who are merely trying to survive in the conflict-torn nations we have created for them. Most of society can barely even comprehend the scope of violence that has been inflicted to entire generations of people in these regions, whose selfish suffering will echo in the pages of humanity's untold story. I leave you with a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. that speaks volumes to our current situation here. An individual has not started living until he can rise above the narrow confines of his individualistic concerns to the broader concerns of all humanity. One of the greatest secrets that has been kept from society is the truth behind the properties of two simple colors and what they really represent. All throughout history and peppered through religion and culture, the use of unique color symbology has described a long-fought war over the very future of consciousness in humanity. Two seemingly simple colors describe the internal struggle being fought between the left and right side of the human brain and how we define reality. Along with our own deep mental conflict, the same unique color symbology can be used to describe the underlying struggle for the very future of the planet itself. Will humans on Earth exist in a draconian society dominated by war and the accumulation of resources, or that of an informative, peaceful society where humanity can propel itself to the next stage of its own evolution? The decisions that we make in recognizing and following these frequency paths will ultimately determine how our future will play out. One of the most fundamentally important aspects of understanding the overall methods for how human consciousness and health has been suppressed is through the unique frequencies that the colors of red and blue possess. The reason these particular colors are chosen and worshipped by so many ancient cultures is directly related to the unique states of conscious awareness for which a person can function within them. Our ability to perceive true reality is ultimately dependent on which vibrational frequency we are dominated by. After you read this, you will never look at the colors of red and blue the same way again. The use of precise color symbology directly relates to the underlying fabric of reality itself. If scientists break down human beings to their most basic form, all that remains would be atoms existing in various states of frequency and vibration. What that means is that human beings function like super batteries of energy which feed off of electrical currents. The particular frequency that a person exists in will dictate everything in their reality. Instead of our given name at birth, which we distinguish ourselves by, the real identity of the individual should be based on their unique frequency. Similar to a fingerprint, each person has their own personal frequency, and when similar frequencies interact, the result is almost always positive. The same can be said about the opposite interaction. That's why most people really do not like being around certain individuals that bring their mood down since they could seek the company of others who make them feel happy. This is not something taught in school or even really known to most of society. When a person is labeled as having a high metabolism or being overactive, that personality trait translates into a high vibratory rate and frequency. The higher the vibration someone can achieve, the healthier they will be and have the greatest chances for success within their own conscious expansion. This deliberate lowering of human frequency and vibration impacts us on profound levels and suppresses the evolution of our consciousness. In the known universe, there seems to be two dominant classes of species racing towards the highest state of evolution. Those two species classifications fall into either reptiles or mammals. Since everything in the universe is balanced within the rules of duality, it is fascinating to find out that these two species classes, seemingly competing against one another, 
solely function within opposite vibrational frequencies from each other. Since all vibrational frequency is represented visually to us as the light spectrum, it means that while reptiles function in a red frequency, mammals belong to a blue frequency, and this specific vibration greatly affects both our mental and physical state. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of what understanding these concepts means for finding out the truth and raising your vibration. When a human being exists both mentally and physically in a red vibrational frequency, it means their consciousness is functioning in the lowest possible state. That's why our root chakra is the color red. By living in the root chakra, society has become much more prone to stress and disease, which greatly limits their capacity to absorb and comprehend complex information. The human body and mind functions very poorly in a red frequency state and limits us in every way. A good comparison for this analogy can be found with modern day reptiles and mammals. Picture yourself observing a group of turtles sunning themselves on a warm log or a group of alligators clinging together for warmth in a zoo. These creatures which are found within the reptile family must constantly seek a warm internal temperature in order to conserve their energy consumption. Because the reptile must function in a slower frequency and vibration than that of mammals, they exist in a red spectrum of existence on Earth. Mammals, on the other hand, exist on the opposite side of the spectrum from red, even if we have developed a collective amnesia to that truth. Despite the fact that human beings are mammals, the left side of the brain is still dominated by the ancient lineage back to reptiles in a purely analytical mindset with a lack of compassion. By allowing the masculine or left side of the brain to control our governing and identity, the barbaric and senseless domination of society through warfare has disconnected humanity from itself and the planet. Through understanding these two sides of the brain and how frequency factors into our conscious state, the path that humanity has taken becomes much more clear. The most useful way to interpret and rationalize these two lobes of the brain and how consciousness functions within them is by explaining the relative vibrational frequency to which the colors of red and blue are perceived through. Picture a friendly afternoon soccer game in which two teams need to be chosen. They take to the field, wearing the colors of red and blue, and race towards the ball. Without knowing it, they have taken part in the universal struggle I like to call red versus blue. Since the state of our awareness is directly dependent on these color frequencies and wavelengths, the seemingly unknown battle taking place all around us represents our very future here. In the United States, the control of the political process is fought over between the red elephants and blue donkeys. Both of these lobes of governing can be directly equated to represent the left and right side of the human brain, as well as the ancient family factions of the Anunnaki. The Republicans pride themselves on military force and the domination of wealth for their country, while on the other side, the Democrats claim to seek peace and a general compassion for humanity. In reality, both of these parties have largely become irrelevant and are simply false sides of the same corrupt and broken system, controlled by elite bankers at the top of the pyramid. True democracy was lost in the United States when President Kennedy was assassinated by the CIA when he tried to gain control of its monetary systems. This great vision of freedom, being progressively eroded, was laid down by the Founding Fathers and can be seen clearly with the Washington Memorial, which is actually an Egyptian obelisk, the colors of red and blue dominate our subconscious perception and examples for their use can still be found all over the world. Red and blue are also the most commonly used colors for the representation of country flags and in many military uniforms. With so many striking correlations found everywhere for the use of red and blue, we must stop and strongly consider the deeper reasons behind them. And if there isn't truly more to this story than what meets the eye, the battle over simple colors may seem trivial to many at first until they fully understand the properties of what they represent for our consciousness. In popular culture throughout history, those individuals whose clothing or faction represented the color blue were consistently considered the good guys, 
while those representing by red are always the bad guys. This logic has defined itself within all of society without giving anyone a basis as to why. The answer to that question opens the doorway to understanding the long-forgotten, ancient struggle of our past and future. Blue and red exist at nearly opposite ends of the visible light spectrum. They are about as different as colors can be. Even more interesting is that blue light has a cooler temperature than red light. I find it fascinating that colors can have these properties and yet little of this knowledge is taught to society. Blue is also considered to be the favorite color for the majority of all people on Earth. Imagine the temperature of a cold alpine lake compared to a volcano spewing out searing hot lava. The colors that are represented follow the wavelength for what the elements are. The human body is made up primarily out of water. We are like superconductors of energy that have electricity flowing through our charged system. That concludes the end of this section. Peace and blessings to you all.